All right, I'm on hole number four of the 2020 St. Patrick's Day Tournament and Tuesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. And just going out today trying to put uh, together what I learned yesterday in the practice round and just trying to uh, put all that stuff together and make sure that like the minimum score and where I'm at and how I what clubs I wanted to bring and where I'm at on the holes is is what I want. I may qualify in this account today just to try and knock it out. I have a bunch of classes that I'm going through for C's and so I got to try and get all that stuff done. So we're, are, we're getting brain bleed watching these training videos all week. So we're on Glen Monarch Estates and we're on hole number one. And hole number one, which is a super hole in one of a hole. If you can get any kind of wind other than what we're getting. <laughs> and we're getting wind that's rolling like this. And so where we're at here in this spot, when we go to make our adjustment over, over the sand, here's the deal. You got a sniper. It's got one ring in the center. That's your yellow ring. And then it's got your, your next ring, orange ring or whatever the heck color that is. I think it's orange. And so these two rings combined add up to two miles per hour. If I can, if it won't give me the thing here, miles per hour, dose, two miles per hour, right? One of my, one of my uh, subscribers asked the question of why don't we, why don't I bring out a club here that hits less accurate, so we don't have to make as big of an adjustment. The deal is, is that if I let's say for instance I brought out a a, a big dog, it's at two miles per hour. Its yellow ring, its center ring, is the same size as two rings on a sniper. If you get two rings off from the spot that we want to start when you get to that second ring it drops over it, that second mile per hour it drops over the lip of the sand and it takes a jump from somewhere around 1.9 miles per hour to about two five maybe a little bit more on either side maybe just a titch less but it, this is pretty close so if you need to make an adjustment that's 2.2 you're in between this and so one second you're there and the next second it hops one second you're at 1.9 and the next second it's at 2.5 and anything in between is on the inside lip of this sand and you can't make that adjustment and so we're having an issue pulling out the wind now normally i come at this with one backspin with no side spin but there is a way to there are several ways we have to watch the way the wind's blowing so if the wind is blowing and we're adding on 10%, so we're doing a plus 10%. So if we're having to make an adjustment that's somewhere between 1.9 and 2.5, then we're going to have issues here. So we have a couple choices. We could bring out a bigger, uh, we could bring out a ball that causes more wind. You could bring out a marlin ball or, an, or a quasar. Like if you're using a navigator, you could bring out a quasar. Because normally, traditionally on this hole, I was using a navigator. And you could bring out a ball that causes the wind to be higher. So if it's higher, then you can get past that spot where it dips down in and you can make the adjustment. And you need to make the adjustment where normally we would pull the wind out in this direction. We need to come over to the other side and push the wind out so that we can use the rings over here to get the job done. The other thing we could do is we could bring the ball from the spot where it's here where we're going straight at the cup. We could pull it over to the left and the rough here is deeper and we could put on side spin to bring it back to the hole. And that's another way we could do it. We could bounce from over here and do the bounce on shot. And really in Ricky, the black line is not really the preferred way to go. You could set it up over here in the rough where you're doing more of this type of a rough bump um, and do it where the rough is the absolute deepest to the sand to try and work it out. So this hole right here, I'm not sure. It's <laughs> You can get on this one. I got on this hole three times yesterday and all three times I had different wind. One time I had a really high wind, and one time I had, and twice I had the wind where it was right there at the deal, where it was hard to make the adjustment. And so it's really going to be dependent on how big the wind is. So we will have to see. Let's see what my choices are here. I'm definitely coming out with a sniper. And I'm going to start off with a nav, and we will see where the deal goes. So if I get into a spot where... 
if I add on the 10% and I'm at two, I may switch to a quasar just to make the wind a little bit higher, but we'll have to kind of, we'll have to play this by ear. Or I may switch to a marlin. If the, if the wind is less than two, we're good. If the wind is over two five, we're good. But if the wind ends up being in that two range, then we're going to have a problem. So we shall see. Let's open up a chest. Clear out a spot. Let's anticipate that we're going to get a hole in one here. Let's make sure we got a spot for that chest to go. Always looking for commons. I got the apocalypse today in my uh, club card trading. So you always want to be able to, once you get your, it's really important if your commons aren't maxed out that you get them maxed out so you can start participating in the uh, club trading every day. I go first. What's my win? Three six. Awesome. Navigator will work. So it's three six. So that's going to be right at about four. And I'm doing a one point two per ring. So that's going to be three rings and a quarter. And I want to go right on the edge over here of the cut. So three rings and a quarter. Let's see how that jumps. There's the big jump. So there's three rings and a quarter. I'm just trying to hit it nice and easy. Now oh, I'm getting some lag, damn it. And even hitting it great to the right right there, that should not have gone in the sand. And that might be an issue where once again, because of how it was, because of how that's popping into the sand, the adjustments off, this hole is going to cause us, I'm going to have, to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to switch and start hitting this hole from the back because I'm not going to dick around with that wind as the tournament goes on and keep having to make major adjustments on it. Or I'm going to come at it with a guardian like my opponent is, and I'm just going to stick it right at the cup. Because I don't like having problems with par threes. I don't count on par threes to win me tournaments. I count on par fours to win me tournaments. And those opportunities that we have to get Albi. But par fours are really, for me, they're my big focus. That's where you can win tournaments is on par fours. And if I can pick up a par three and get a hole in one, awesome. That's gravy. I'm going to try and hedge my bets here. And that was too much of a uh, great. We'll miss the hole. This hole right here in hole number six. Hole number six, I know I tried a different way of coming in hole number six just to see what the look is. I know how to play the shot where we go straight forward on hole number six. I tried to do a rough bump on there just to see what the angle was, and I don't like that angle at all. So I'm just going to play hole number six in the traditional way. But this hole right here is the hole that is traditionally a super hole in one of a hole, but because of the way that the wind is blowing this week, it is going to cause more than me. It's going to cause more people headaches than just me. All right, good luck in the tournament. Well, that was the deciding factor on whether or not I'm going to tank today's round. <laughs> Definitely going to. I do not want to go in with a uh, with a zero on my scorecard. Let's see what the what we got up here. So minus eleven, minus tens. People are going to be in the minus eleven range. Is going to be, I think, the minimum score. What's what's a six to get in? And they dropped the par five, so five shooting a five and six, dropping that par five. So it looks like you could probably get in with a minus 10, but I'm not really interested in, uh, eh, I may. 
I may try and qualify today just so I can knock this account out of the loop so I don't have to play it. And I'm not really ever too concerned about where my practice account ends up. As long as I can make the weekend round so I can continue to practice, that's what's important. But I do not like seeing zeros on my scorecard, especially on par threes. On any, on any hole, but on par threes, that really pisses me off. <laughs> so we're back to the drawing board. <laughs> All right. That was hole number four of the 2020 St. Patrick's Day Tournament and Tuesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. Thanks for watching.